Coming up on The Cody Willard Show, Trump says companies shouldn't have to report quarterly earnings anymore. Is Elizabeth Warren more capitalist than Trump? Plus, sports with Ross the Boss and much more. The Cody Willard Show is brought to you by TradingWithCody.com. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to yet another episode of The Cody Willard Show. I am Cody Willard. Got my compatriot Piper Adamian in the house. I will have Ross the Boss on with me talking sports in a moment. Corey Turner's amazingly bad movie reviews. And of course, the man in the trenches himself, Chris McHugh, running the show. I'm getting shelled in here. We're taking fire. We're taking fire. You know, people say this is going to be a really good show coming up. They're all liars. This show, though, is going to be a really good show. What we got coming up. So, what do we got? President Trump says he spoke to company CEOs about how to improve the business climate and found support for dropping quarterly earnings reports. And he's asked the SEC to study the idea. Can they please study the idea, Cody? We can study the idea and get a, uh, an opinion on whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. And long story short, good idea to end quarterly earnings reports. So, Train with Cody subscribers know, I mean, it's a, a recurring theme. I don't know how often I say that I don't care how the business for one of our investments was for the last 75 days of business days. I, I don't care how many gadgets they sold or how many people signed up for their subscription service in a 90 day period. I mean. I often talk about when I'm investing, I have an outlook of 10,000 days. That is about 30 years of anyone's life. And if you're 30 years old, you should be looking out to your, when you're 60. That, that should be your goal. You should be trying to maximize your returns and minimize your losses consistently every day sustainably for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Now, 90 days, look, here's a good example right now. Western Digital, WDC, company makes storage, flash storage and computer storage stuff and makes your iPhone and smartphone and computers know what's in the memory. And that's when you say, I'll have a 256 gigabyte iPhone. You're buying some sort of flash drive there. Now, the la the, they, they had a bad quarter. The last 90 days were bad. Probably the next 90 days are going to be bad. There's been some pricing pressure in DRAM. Now, as an investor, you can sell that stock because, hey, the last three months haven't been very good. As an analyst and a long-term revolution investor like Cody Willard is, I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say it might be an opportunity because the market's worried about the last 90 days in the next 90 days, when I'm looking out over the next five years and thinking about the incredible exponential explosion of growth in data demand, driverless cars will generate more data that will be stored and analyzed than anything ever in the in the server farms and the clouds themselves, there'll be more data demand than ever before. And it's all going flash drive because flash is faster than your spinning wheel disk drive storage stuff. And that's just driverless in, in the cloud. You also have the cars themselves that will have a huge amount, 256 gigs of data. Uh-uh, talking terabytes, talking huge, multiple exponential growth in just the car industry for flash drives over the next five or 10 years. Then there's artificial intelligence, there's robotics. There are so many developing revolutions, all of which demand much growth, demand much storage, data storage. So going back to this thing, why do I care about the last 90 days and why do companies do you know how much how expensive it is and how many employees are wasting their times from the CFO who is often the number two guy at the company wasting tens of hours every 90 days in order to 
produce the reports about how the business was for the last 90 days and then to analyze and guess how the business will be for the next 90 days. Let it go. So for once, I'm actually agreeing with Trump's or Clinton or any Republican Democrat regime leader. It's a rare thing for me to go, yeah, this actually sounds like a good idea. And I think this is a good idea. A little bit of more long-termism, a little bit less short-termism. I'm okay with that. Chris, back to you. All righty. Elizabeth Warren has been making the rounds in the Wall Street Journal and other conservative news outlets, proposing to make her own changes to how corporations are run. Among other things, she wants employees to have to have direct seats on boards of any billion-dollar corporation. Cody, I'm in the weeds. What's what's going on here? Help. Get, you got a machete? I got a machete. I got a machete. And you're going to need one because when you read or listen to any mainstream outlet report about Elizabeth Warren, even the Washington Post, which is supposedly, I guess, on Elizabeth Warren's side because it's a supposedly liberal slash Democrat kind of leaning magazine, uh, news outlet. And so is Elizabeth Warren, supposedly. But if you'll step back, what was I found interesting on a lot of levels? Is Elizabeth Warren actually a conservative capitalist? Because she was putting these op-eds in the Wall Street Journal, a renowned conservative, a hundred year old conservative, put that in quotations, kind of rag. And when the Washington Post even reports about it, they say it as Democrat, this is a direct quote from the Washington Post, as Democrats wrangle with the new lefty momentum energizing the party's base, Warren is defining an economic vision that's bolder than Hillary Clinton's incrementalism while less hostile than Bernie Sanders' program to the underpinnings of the free market. I am a capitalist, Elizabeth Warren told the CNBC reporter that I took that from. Um, I, have Elizabeth, I have interviewed Elizabeth Warren several times in the years past. I've read her books, Two Family Income Trap. It was her first one, I believe. First one I read anyway. Dated a girl, actually, who was uh, a teacher's assistant to Elizabeth Warren. And look, I always wanted Elizabeth Warren to, to join it with Ron Paul and create the alternative ticket to the classic Republican Democrat regime thing. And my point about all of this, though, is she actually is being capitalist here. The, you look at what she is proposing and it's capitalist. She's, it's not like she's over here, Bernie Sanders socialize, trying to turn this into socialism or something. She is simply proposing that among the, uh, the biggest proposal here, the one that seems to have shaken up corporate America, is that she wants there to be seats on the corporate board of any billion dollar company that goes to employees. An employee seat, at least one, maybe three, employee seats in any board meeting for a billion dollar corporation. If you will look at a chart, and I should have pulled this up, doggone it. I actually reached out to some of my hedge fund buddy managers, uh, hedge fund manager buddies, and asked them, what do you guys, you know, I know that you, some of you guys are liberal, quote unquote, Democrats, and some of them are Republican. I reached out to them and said, what are you guys thinking about this proposal? And one of them said, hey, you need to make sure you get the chart that shows corporate share, corporate profits share of GDP. And over the last 30 years, corporate share of GDP, the corporate profits, the amount of GDP that goes to corporate profits has grown exponentially. Meanwhile, labor, employee share, middle-class entrepreneur share for that matter, poor people's share, has stagnated and, especially in the last 10, 20 years, declined. That is a direct result of the Republican-Democrat regime under both Republicans and Democrats allowing endless consolidation among every major industry, allowing subsidies, creating subsidies and welfare programs for every major corporation, every major industry, and labor having no seat at the table. 
So put, what's wrong with putting labor at the table? I will tell you there's going to be corruption and the guy who gets voted in to represent the labor and the trouble. It's like this is a flawless proposal either. I mean, you know, unions end up corrupted too. All of us have seen HAPA or read about it. I've actually never actually seen that movie. I should maybe watch it sometimes. But the point being that it labor needs a seat at the table. The data, indisputable data from the last 30 years, no one's, you can argue climate change, I suppose, but you cannot argue that banks share of, bank profits share of GDP and corporate profit share of GDP have risen exponentially and labor middle class share dwindle. You can also see that the tax obligation of the middle class and labor has risen as a percentage of total gross tax receipts for the government in the last 30 years. So you're getting less of the pie and paying more of the share of taxes if you're labor or middle class. Yes, you need a seat at the table. There's got to be a change here. One last thing I really want to note here is she, she name checked is, uh, I guess, I think this was a CNBC report I'm quoting from here. Warren name checked the business roundtable in her Wednesday op-ed, which the business roundtable is the lobby group for Fortune 200 CEOs, not the lobby group for the companies. This is a lobby group for CEOs of Fortune 200 companies, the 200 largest companies in this country. Their CEOs actually are paying people to go beg for more welfare and protections just for them, not even for the companies they work for. Point being that in 1981, the business roundtables, corporate goal that they said, stated that a corporation's goal should be, quote, to enhance the enterprise, provide jobs and build the economy. But by 1997, reflecting the shifting consensus, the business roundtable said the principal objective of a business enterprise is to generate economic returns to its owners. That is a fact. They changed their mission, their recommendation for missions at corporations. Good call out from the capitalist conservative, Elizabeth Warren, more conservative than, Warren, than Donald Trump, who's out there begging for bailouts for farmers and more welfare for corporations that need more help and protections. And hey, maybe Elizabeth Warren's the capitalist in the room after all. Back to you, Chris McHugh. Oh, hi, Cody. I didn't see you there. I was just enjoying a delicious cup of Folgers Instant Crystals. Oh, Fill it to the brim. Thank you. That's oh, the wrong company. Sorry, doing the show. Hey, uh, you know what? What's that movie? Uh, Crocodile Dundee said, that's a knife. Well, this is a bad movie. High jinks and unintentional wackiness, Cody, abound when aliens crash land on Earth. That's the crux of the Australian flick, Nuki, in this amazingly bad movie review. Should we roll it, Cody? What do you think? Let's roll it. This is Corey Turner, and welcome to Corey Turner's Amazingly Bad Movie Reviews. Nuki, the 1987 movie from South Africa, is what happens when you try to create the magic of E.T., but don't. Not even close. Two alien space travelers crash land on Earth and are separated. Now one falls into the hands of the American government and of course is near death after an onslaught of medical experiments while his buddy, Nuki, is searching the African continent trying to find his way to America so he can rescue his friends. Supercomputers, an African tribe who thinks Nuki is a bad omen, earthquakes, a nun, an evil government, a talking chimp, and special effects that are special. Mm -hmm. Sadly, Nuki is referred to as one of the worst science fiction movies of all time. Special, special effects that are special. That's some very funny stuff. You got, Chris, you always love a good bad movie review, don't you? I do, Cody. We got the Truth Trifecta now. You ready for it? Roll right in. Truth Trifecta, my new segment just created it today. I got one minute on each topic. First topic, number one. I'll go to the next sheet. 
They want to have it all memorized. The only guaranteed return in any investment. I've got it for you. Nobody else can have you can give you the average retail investor at home a guaranteed pick that will I guarantee generate returns for you. Pay off your debt. If you're paying 1% interest rate, which you're not, you're still losing money. If you're paying 10%, which you're probably not, you're still paying way too much. If you're paying 17 or 27% on $500 or $5,000, if you're even paying 6% on a mortgage, get out of debt, pay off your debt. I don't know about buying Tesla. I don't know about buying Google. I don't know about buying GE at this very moment on any of those stocks. But I do know with 100% certainty that if you will invest it by paying off your debt, you get the return. Next topic, best way to invest in real estate. It's not rental properties. It's not REITs. The best way to invest in real estate, buy land. There's no maintenance. Every If you've got a rental property, every time someone moves out, every time the plumbing goes wrong, anytime anything happens, you're down there spending time, money, energy. My time and energy is worth more than my money right now. But I don't want to spend any of it on anything that I've got real estate. What I've got to go do manual labor or go pay someone to worry about manual labor by land. There's no downside to land can appreciate. And as they always say, they ain't making more of it. Third topic, Elon Musk in the news again. And I know I, I've got the solution. All he needs, the only thing Elon Musk needs to do to fix his life. He's in the New York times crying today about how hard his life is and the stress in it. He needs sleep. CNBC is reporting that the board at Tesla is worried about Elon Musk's ambient use. Look, I've got a medically fragile daughter and she needs 24 seven, not quite as much anymore, but for the first year or so, it was 24 seven eyeballs on her. We had to care for her 24 seven. And there were weeks where I was getting maybe one, three, four hours of sleep per night. And I would cry randomly. I mean, it, that's what he was doing in the New York Times today. He was crying because he's just so tired. He's not seeing the world regularly. He needs to just get some sleep. Chill out, Elon Musk. That is your true trifecta. Ross the Boss Hi, in the house with sports. Hit me, Ross. Hi, everybody. I'm Ross the Boss, and I want to talk sports with you, cowboy. Great, great night last night. I don't know if you watched it. The Eagles played the Patriots, rematch the Super Bowl, what is it, 52? Um, Ross the Boss took the Patriots, like I told all the viewers last, on Wednesday. The Patriots flew them away. I got an unbelievable tip right before the game in which some idiot rented a Cessna plane and had a banner with the score of the of the Super Bowl saying the Eagles won 41 to, I think it was 41 to 33 was the final score in the Super Bowl. So it, instead of like to motivate players that they see that, Tom Brady saw that from his own stadium bragging about the Super Bowl. The, some Eagle fan did this. Tom Brady went up to Belichick and said, I'm playing the whole, the whole first half. I just saw this thing. I'm in all, I want to win this game. Ross the boss, knowing that information, doubled down on all his bets around town. The um, the final score, 37 to 20. Ross the boss cleaned up. I hope all my fans did too. But it just shows you what idiot had the idea to put that right before a game for motivation for the Patriots to win that game. I know Ross, it's preseason, Cody. I know it's preseason. It's I know they're happy. Job. But don't it's do an that. Insight. No, it's an inside job. It's like when the Republicans and Democrats do something and then pretend that they're actually alarmed that it happened and they were the ones who did it. Not 9-11, not 9-11, not an inside job, but that flying that thing 
over the stadium. That was an instance. That was a, a, a Patriots fan who paid for that. I don't. I think it was an Eagles fan. I don't think the Patriots are are that smart to do that for a preseason game. They did that for a preseason. You, you know, Chris point. Meyer. You know that he's he's a big the biggest Boston fan ever. He's not bright enough to do something like that. And it's a preseason game. Doesn't matter. But Ross the boss because Vegas takes action. He guaranteed that game. That was an easy, 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 easy win. First of all, they were motivated anyway, but to, to see that in warm-ups, I would go crazy if I was a player, if I saw that in my own stadium. Um, talking more about football, Des Bryant was in Cleveland yesterday. Remember him for the Cowboys? He's very close to signing a contract with the Browns. I know, Cody, you love the Browns. Um, we're all calling – we all kind of like them because of the show on HBO, but he's signing helmets with the Browns emblem on it. He's signing T-shirts. He's happy to be in Cleveland. He hasn't signed yet, but he will. With, with Des Bryant and Baker Mayfield on the same team, I, get him, I don't know. I, I think it's like betting million. on the Browns. You betting never on know. the Browns is like betting on gold. It's hated. Nobody thinks it can ever go up. They don't think they can ever win. Everybody hates the whole thing. Bet on the Browns. Bet on gold right now. They Sell Bitcoin. Like gold. I got it. Okay. hundred like I did. Now let's talk baseball. See my baseball? I do these power ratings every week. I'll give you my power ratings. Red Sox, number one team right now. They're going to win 115 games. They're going to break a record with the best record ever in baseball. They're on track. They're unstoppable. Um, the Cubs are my second team. My third team are the Yankees. And my fourth team, because I'm wearing the shirt, is the, Oakland, is the Oakland Athletics. You know what the Oakland Athletics payroll is, Cody? You know how much they pay? Their total payroll for their whole team is for this year. Just guess. I the Yankees. Is, I bet it's Yankees one two hundred nine. Yeah, I bet it's one third of what the Yankees payroll the is. The Yankees is two hundred nine. The Red Sox is one thirty one. The Cubs is one eighteen. The, the the Oakland Athletics is forty seven million. Forty seven million. Twenty five percent. Less than twenty five percent of the Yankees total record. budget. And if they were in the National League, if they were in the National League. They would have the best record in the National League. So bravo, Bob Melvin. I'm supporting them. I go to spring training. I hang out with that team. They let me do You're always driving. Yeah, I always see your pictures hanging out with the athletics at spring training and stuff. You got inside information I, there too, I, I suppose. I'm Ross the boss. I, I get all the inside scoop. Um, Coach Cody, I know you love Tiger Woods. I heard this story yesterday. It made me laugh. Um, Tiger's caddy um, was interviewed on a radio show. And he would, it was, wasn't the tournament last week. And when, when Tiger almost won the tournament, if he saw, he came like one stroke or two strokes away from winning the, the PGA championship. The week before at Bridgestone, um, there was this guy that was like this yelling stuff bad about Tiger the whole, the whole match. He was just following Tiger around yelling horrible things about him. So the, so the, the caddy went up to him and said, listen, can you just be quiet? Tiger's trying to concentrate. Do you mind just not yelling during his when he swings? And the guy said, "Pay me for it." So the coach, so the guy said, "Okay, I'll give you twenty five dollars." So the caddy paid him twenty five bucks, and he still wouldn't leave. But finally, he left. But twenty five bucks, he got rid of the heckler. Great move on the caddy's part. You know, I'm so the, bravo, caddy. Bravo. The fans should have asked for an autograph from the caddy on the $25. That would have made it more valuable. But, you know, I always wonder, Ross, do you think the golfers talk trash to each other intra-hole when they're walking from one to the other? If you're down by a stroke or two and there's $3 million difference between first and fourth place and Tiger's next to you getting ready to tee off before he gets in his backswing or anything, do you not think some of, someone's going to say to him, uh, hey, hey, Tiger, how are the wife and kids? I I think back in the day when Tiger was unbeatable and he was really like, you know, he was like really arrogant, like he deserved to be. Yes, but now he's very humble. He's hugging other players. Oh, you think these guys got sympathy for him? There's $3 million difference, man. I'm going to say something to Tiger. Tiger's I'm a legend now, Kobe. Pick up a basketball court. He's humble. He's humble. He's humble. He. He's not on top of his game like he was many years ago. You know, he hasn't won a major in years. And I'm, I think I'm just saying, if I, I was a competitor, how about that? If I was a competitor, I'd try to knock him down even further. Ross, we got to go to commercial break. I got to get really a, quick, a couple more really sips quick. for my uh, My picks for this weekend, really quick, because I've been on a roll. I want your I want your viewers to win money uh, tonight. Take Atlanta versus Kansas City. Take Arizona. Um, excuse me. Take the Saints. Versus Arizona, the Saints are at home. The last pick, 
I said it last time, take Oakland Raiders at the L.A. Rams. Oakland will demolish the Rams on Saturday night. I'm Ross the Boss, and I love talking sports with you, Cowboy. <laughs> Thanks, Ross. You are the best, man. Chris, you got any quick wit? You, I saw you with a couple of dollars and a note there. You want to say anything before we throw the commercial break? No, I, I just better make some money is all I'm saying. I mean, I'm on, I'm on a gold I, boss Pay chain. off your debt. That way, that way. Yeah. <laughs> pay Sorry, off your you mortgage. Know. Pay off your debt. Pay off your mortgage. That's the only guaranteed return, man. Ross's picks are great, but they ain't guaranteed. We'll be right back, folks. A former CNBC and Fox News anchor, hedge fund manager, and the go-to stock market guest for The Tonight Show, Cody Willard and his stock analysis have been published in the Financial Times, The Wall Street Journal, Fortune Magazine, and many other places. Want to follow his secrets to investment success? Go to tradingwithcody.com. There you can get analysis on stocks, cryptos, markets, and the economy, a full list of Cody's positions, access to Cody's chat room, trade alerts every time Cody buys or sells, and much more. To find out more, go to tradingwithcody.com. Hey, we're back, Cody. What what are you what are you doing there? Are you playing something, Cody? I actually have an album on my I, Apple uh, iTunes that I paid for years ago called uh, the Memphis uh, Jug, Jug, the Cody. Memphis okay, Jug Boat the Tugboat Band. They're playing Cody these. and Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, I think it was, right? <laughs> Hey, Chris, let, let's do a little throwback, fr uh, flashback Friday. Flashback Friday. Fun. I'm All tired right. of answering questions. Yeah, let's do it. And uh, I thought we are going to do a segment called Cody Sings to His Daughters to Sleep with Bad 80s Songs that He Can't Remember Lyrics to. <laughs> Just kidding. This is Flashback <laughs> Friday. We're talking about... The time has come, and you know that you're the only one for me I don't, I don't know the words at all i'm not even sure it's a it's a four-year-old appropriate song but uh i sing it and sometimes my, my daughter the the late the older one who does speak says daddy please stop singing yeah my, that's what my daughter uh used to do with my wife she'd go she'd go mommy dop mommy <laughs> dop you were like done with it so cody we were talking about earlier how one of the grandfathers of video games says you know these video games are meant to be social like pong and you're supposed to be around with friends and then we got into this whole phase where people are playing video games at home one player games by themselves and now i see my son playing Fortnite, and it's maybe like a rainy day or something where he can't go out with his friends but he's talking to him on the headset and they're able to interact and create these memories and then connect in person and hang out with each other what do you think about this evolution that we've had of video games as you kind of flash back to your childhood i occasionally play wgt golf i guess oh that's loud um and you know i i can't say i've ever met anyone i've competed against i, I don't have i mean i have an xbox and i'll play when my cousins or nephews or kids come over and I, I, but um and i guess it is social because we do we you know these kids and i interact and talk trash and have fun i don't i've never been on xbox live or whatever it is that you have to the subscription service that you have to pay to get into then to interact with other people i played Fortnite with one of my daughter's nurses daughters um but again i played and then handed her the xbox joystick and she played with it I don't know, Chris. It's I, I'm a little weirded out by the very idea, though, that you're interacting with people that you can't see. There's so much in body language and in facial expression that, um, you know, I almost sometimes feel like if I have a sixth sense or something. One time my wife and I were uh, selling an office of hers and the guy who had bought it had come in. And when I walked out, of there, I said, just please don't ever be alone with that guy. That guy really gave me the creeps. And she was like, oh, actually, yes, that is correct. And she laid out a couple of examples. She's like, I never would have even. Anyway, we sold the building and no big deal. But I'm scared of people that I don't see interacting. If I had been hearing that guy over the phone, I might have thought he would have been fine. So I would never going to let my kid interact with someone they played Xbox with. Yeah, no, I hear you. And that, that's what we kind of had to navigate a little bit. And you will soon enough, too. Uh, you know, if uh, the girls get into video games later on down the road and, you know, who's that creepy guy that you're on? Uh, or boys, Chris, you know, I mean, 
Yeah. Uh, you, I'm just as scared. I don't have a son, but I, there's, I, I wonder that I'm sure there's data that explains it, but I, I would assume that it's pretty equal boys and girls being kidnapped and otherwise harmed by strangers. Well, there, there was just in the news, somebody uh, got kidnapped. It was some type of online game. I don't know if it was Fortnite or whatnot, uh, but that did happen. But you know what? Flashback once again to the eighties, you're in the arcade, some creepy dudes in the arcade too. So no matter where you go, yeah I, and chris that's that in the end I, I i you always want to assume that people are good and um and that people want good for the world um at least on a one-on-one -on -one individual basis but when you are, are interacting with masses whether it's on a show like this or on playing Fortnite, um i you know there's a lot of creepy weird scary people out there and just you know, we got to be reasonable and smart. I guess is the only thing you can say. Play Xbox all you want. It's not exactly Pong. Yeah, and to end it on a happy note, you know, uh, played these video games growing up, and I'd rent a lot of them. I played for maybe five minutes, ten minutes each game, and then I, you know, go rent some else at the store. But it's so interesting now that everybody's getting middle aged. That was growing up in the eighties. We have, you know, all these local retro video game conventions and stuff like that. And it's interesting seeing these people who are middle aged with their kids celebrating their youth and it wasn't like playing tag it was completely different but it was this solitary thing maybe you had one friend over and to see people in a convention space celebrating that i think is very unique and odd something that i never would have thought that i'd ever seen you know video game geeks unite and then they bring their kids in and they're showing them pac-man and all this stuff so uh, I think it, I think it's kind of cool, and that's part of what's great about having kids. You show them what you grew up with, whether it's eighties movies or whatever. Chris, you remember uh, Space Zap? Space App? Space Zap? You had to yeah. shoot. There were four ways to shoot, and you just had to do it as fast as you can. Uh, that was my favorite game. Piper, your it's favorite like video game as a child? Whack a mole with Space Zappers. Pitfall. Pitfall. That was a wow. good one. Wow. Nice Larry. reference. Nice yeah, reference. Yeah, a little Activision going on. Is that 16-bit nice. graphics? What were those graphics? Uh, that would have been not even 8-bit. That was like uh, Atari days. Oh, where'd you go? I was doing the... I was trying you jumped to do up. The, imitate What's out? The... There's a snake. There's a hole. No. Ah. Right? You'd like grab onto something and you'd swing by and then... Ah! Ah. Cody reminds me of I a young... I haven't played football a long time. All right, guys. That's a wrap. That is the Cody Willard Show. Chris McHugh... Piper Damien, Ross Mark, peace, love, and happiness. Oh.